Welcome back. Welcome back to the Auto Authorities Podcast. My name is Jay coming to you live with Gerald Bentley. Gerald, hey Gerald, Gerald, we have a big, big show to you, for you today. We have, we're going to talk about leasing because all these three-year leases are coming off leases and people think they have equity and they don't know what to do with their cars. And we're going to let you know. Are you ready to do this, Gerald? Absolutely. Let's do it. Have you ever felt like you were taken for a ride while buying, selling, or repairing your car? Well, not anymore. I'm Jay, and this is the podcast to tell you what to watch out for, whether you are buying, selling, or repairing your car. With over 26 years of automotive experience, we are the Auto Authorities. This podcast is sponsored by iAutoAgent.com. We're real estate agents for cars. There we go. Booyah. Welcome back to the Auto Authorities. It is Jay and Gerald coming to you live, and we are going to be talking about leasing. There's all these three-year leases coming off lease, and people think they have equity. They think that they can make money on these cars, and we have some information for you to help you make an educated decision. If you have a lease, thinking about leasing, I mean, it's going to be all about leasing, isn't it, Gerald? You know, uh, coming up, yeah, it's it's a big bubble that's getting ready to burst because mm -hmm. you're looking at the leases coming due from the last time where there was a prevalent supply of vehicles at every brand and everybody was doing incentives. So there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of payment shocks coming. Oh, yes, there is. And we have stories today. We have story time. And I've got a really, really good story to share with you. So definitely stay tuned. But if you're just tuning in, uh, I wanted to first of all, thank our sponsors, iAutoAgent.com. They are helping businesses sell their fleets of vehicles, letting the business owner stay focused on their business, or we'll help the business owner help find the really, really hard to find vehicles out there. We're still helping individuals, but the businesses really do need our help. And of course, Gerald Bentley with Dealership Rescue, and he has an awesome podcast called Wrestling with Sales. And it is just absolutely amazing um, what it, the information is out there. Gerald, tell, tell everybody a little bit about your business and what you do to help people. Yeah, well, we can definitely talk with any dealership. You can go to their website. It's dealershiprescue.net. We'll dig into the analytics, help find little things that you can change to adjust, to adapt a little bit better to the market. Even something as simple as making one simple suggestion with all of your service appointments when you set them on the phone, that could create an extra $25,000 of revenue. Just one sentence, and you can add $25,000 to the bottom line each month. That's not too bad a deal. Then you can go on YouTube, search wrestling with sales, and there we got a, a wide range. Talk to people that are successful in entertainment, in combat sports, in sales. In the last month, we've had on Ray Shevska from Car Edge. Currently, we have on the guy in the back there, Hoodie Hollett. He's one of the biggest tag team wrestlers in the independent circuit, and he's also an award-winning music video director and video editor. Used to work for Tech Nine and Strange Music here in the Kansas City area. So a lot of topics, something that's pretty interesting for anyone. And if you're a fan of combat sports or pro wrestling, you definitely want to check it out. Absolutely. And if you're just tuning in, we have several different ways that you can tune in to the Auto Authorities. We have our iTunes and 19 different channels. If you just want to listen to us while you're driving to work or go to our YouTube page, The Auto Authorities, that's where you can watch lots of recorded episodes with lots of valuable information. And we want to hear your feedback too. leave comments below. We want to hear, are you getting the information you need? Are there questions you have? Are there things that you would like to learn about? And we also go live. We go live on Facebook. It's a Facebook group page, The Auto Authorities. You go there and you can watch us live Tuesday at 12 p.m. Central Time. And uh, let's get into this leasing, man. Um, so let's just talk about 2020. 
what happened in 2020? We had this thing called a pandemic and they shut down all these dealerships and, and manufacturers. And then all of a sudden they opened it back up and then nobody was buying anything. And so they offered all these incentives to people to go buy vehicles. Mm -hmm. Well, lots of vehicles were bought in 2020, weren't they, Gerald? Yeah. And that was the last time that you saw a big wave of inventory. So here, just to give you a comparison, in that year, right then, you could have leased a Honda Civic, nice, nice car, nice compact car, popular selling vehicle, could have leased one of those for probably somewhere around $225, $250 a month with minimal money down, maybe your first payment in fees. Now, if you want to lease one of those cars, if you can find one, you're knocking on the door of $400. So it's going to really create a a huge disruption because people are running out the end of their subvented leases. So a lease that was bought down below Fed funds rate, those are done. Their payments are up. Now they're looking at either skyrocketing their payments by buying out their lease or turning it in and looking at doubling their payments if they can find something. Yeah. And it's crazy right now. So like, literally there is there's there's always already a shortage of vehicles available right now and this is not going to help things because most people when they go see what they're going to have to pay for the next vehicle they're probably going to wind up buying them and that's what we're seeing on our end because we did a bunch of leases when people used our vehicle finder program and we would do uh -huh. a lease for them they are holding on to their vehicles now because it used to be that you could get out of your lease before the lease was done and not have to pay sales tax. And now things are changing drastically. And I'll, I'll tell a story here in a second, but I just want to hear your thoughts on that is that we, we are going to have a mess of a situation. Well, yeah, here's something that changed. And this is true for almost every manufacturer with the exceptions of Toyota and Lexus. If you lease a vehicle, and if you leased it basically any time after 2020, and for other manufacturers, it was before that, you are required to either buy the car yourself or send the car back to the manufacturer you bought it from. Nothing else. So in the case of, let's use that same Civic as an example. That car probably had a residual value of like 17000 bucks. What the residual value means, that's, that's a phrase you'll hear a lot with leases. It's really your guaranteed future value. At the time you signed the contract, there's a value that was predetermined that we're going to say the vehicle's worth this much at the end of the three-year term. That's your residual value, guaranteed future value. That's what you can buy it for. Right now, those values are way, way, way lower than the vehicle's actually worth. Somebody with that Civic with the residual value of seventeen thousand, they're selling LX Civics twenty twenty LX Civics with seventy thousand miles at the auctions right now for twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. So you have a minimum of eight thousand dollars sitting there. The only problem is <laughs> you can't you can't get it. The only way you can get it is if you buy it yourself from American Honda Finance, mm -hmm. pay the sales tax, get it registered then you can go back and sell it. So you'll you'll make some of the money, but not all of it. Yep. Or you could go back to a Honda dealership because that's the only place you can trade it in and hold the line and say, hey, I need to get fair market value for this. I don't care what residual value is. You're not selling it at residual value. I need that for my trade. And they know but they if you gotcha. go anywhere else, you can't get rid of the vehicle. It has to go back to Honda. And it's the same, like I said, with most brands. Uh, actually, with Ford, if you leased a Ford, and granted, not that many people do, but if you did, it has to go back to the originating dealer. Not just the brand, it has to go back to the dealer. So lots and, of limitations if you lease vehicles. And they got you, man. And, and I'll tell you, and they know it too. So when you're going back to that dealer and you're like, yeah, I want to I wanna sell it back, they're like, Sure, we'll buy it back from you. And truly, you don't have any options 
a anymore. And they, they really are m making this like very, very difficult for, for the consumer. And, and truly like, like I was saying, we have several clients that we've leased vehicles for and holy cow, they're, they're keeping them. You're better off holding on to the vehicle most of the time, because then you got to go back out and buy another vehicle and you're going to wind up paying more money going to a used vehicle and definitely a new vehicle. Holy cow. Well, but right now you are going to pay more money no matter what, because mm -hmm. let's say, again, let's use that same Civic as an example. You owe 17000 on it. You're going to pay. There's an administration fee to get to get to t taken care of as well. Or you, you can go to a credit union, get a loan, and just pay it directly. But you know, used car rates are going to be at about eight nine percent. So that seventeen thousand is going to come really close to four hundred dollars. Your other option, and something that I think a lot of dealerships are going to be willing to do, because hey, at the end of the day, the dealerships don't get paid to not sell cars. They get paid to sell cars. I mean, they do. They're not all going out there looking to club you. You know, so. If you go into the dealership and you have taken some time, done some research, it's pretty simple. Go on to cars.com, go get a CarMax buy bid on your vehicle, even though you can't sell it to them. They'll give you a cash offer on it. That way you know what your car is actually worth. Then go to the dealership, using that example of a Honda, go to that local Honda dealership and say, hey, my lease is up. I want to lease a new Honda. I want to get my payment as close as possible. I know what my residual is. I know what my guaranteed future value is. But you and I, we both know the car is worth a lot more. So let's figure out something that's a win-win. You get a used car, I get a new car, and let's try to keep the payment as close as possible. Honda is one brand that still has a lot of residualized leases because historically, that's where almost all their incentive money goes. That's a great tip. And for those of you that were listening to that, that is a great tip. I want to share a story with you. So <clears throat> um, there are certain manufacturers out there that are getting hit really, really hard. And Jeep and Chrysler are getting hit really, really hard. And so my agent, Jason, um, he had a client come to him and they wanted to literally sell a Jeep Gladiator, which is a Jeep pickup truck, basically. It had 49,800 miles on it to 2020. They, uh, we found out that their, their buyout now is $34,000 and they think that they can make money on this thing. And Jason comes to me and he's like, oh yeah, they want to make money. I'm like, what are they, what is their buyout? He, he said he, he didn't know. I said, I bet you their buyout is 34 to $35,000. And they're going to have to go pay sales tax on that vehicle as well. They can't just sell that vehicle. So by the time all said and done, and they thought their vehicle, this is the best part. They thought their vehicle was worth right under $40,000. Now, sure. here's, here's the reality of this. And this is really important if you have a lease to listen to this. So we do our research and we have our algorithm and we, we look at current and past data. Well, there are several vehicles on the market right down the street here in, in St. Louis. This dealership was had the exact same vehicle. It was an Overland model. So that was the top of the line. They've been trying to sell it for 119 days at 38,997 and they can't even sell this thing. Sure. And it's like, wait a second, how do you think that you're going to make money? And I, and Gerald, the thing is, is there are people just like that all over that think they're going to make money on these things. And if it's a Jeep, you're not, if it's, yeah. if, if it's a, if it's a Honda or Toyota, you might. Yeah. Well, you know, especially with the Jeep Gladiator, because it was like a lot of new models it was super, super highly anticipated when it came out. People were buying Jeep Wrangler Unlimiteds and taking them to Bison Expeditions, which is an auto customizing company in South Dakota. 
and spending sixty, sixty-five thousand dollars to get them turned into Wrangler Unlimiteds with a pickup bat, essentially a Jeep Gladiator. And it was it was backed by Chrysler. They saw how many of those sold. They said, Oh man, we can do this ourselves. Let's go. That's what the Gladiator came from. And the Gladiator was super hot the first six months it was out. They were selling for thousands over sticker. That's where those residual values got set. The problem is, after the people that really wanted the Gladiators bought them, because they took something that was a niche vehicle that they sold maybe 100 a year and cranked it to every dealership in the country having 50 of them. Well, after the 100 people in each city that really wanted them got them, that was it. And it went from being the hottest vehicle in the marketplace to the slowest selling truck in the marketplace because people realized, hey, well, wait a minute, this has a really small bed. I can't fit the, how many times did you have people ask you when you were selling cars, hey, will this fit a four by eight foot sheet of plywood? I, you know, I don't know. Do you really want to put a four by eight foot sheet of plywood into your new Jeep Sequoia? Oh, yeah. No, but but people would ask that all the time. Well, guess what vehicle doesn't fit a four by eight foot sheet of plywood into its bed? Mm -hmm. A Jeep Gladiator can't can't fit it. Uh, it's a V six, so you really can't tow much of anything. So can't it's a anything. truck that you can't use for work, and it it's one of the slowest vehicles in the country. And then Jeep themselves take a look at that. The average Jeep dealership right now is a hundred thirty five day supply of inventory. Yep. Compare that to your average Toyota, Honda, Kia, Hyundai, Subaru mm -hmm. dealership with like, a, you know, a zero day supply of inventory, right. maybe under 15. Uh, average, you want to be around 90. So, yeah, it's it's creating a problem because, you know, you're really just probably going to want to keep those vehicles depending on, depending on what it is. But it, it is going to really be case by case because certain vehicles do have a bunch of equity. And there are still some. If you have a Toyota, you have a Lexus. It's on you. You can go ahead and you can take it anywhere. You can sell it to anybody. No restrictions. There's not much of that. Mm -mm. No. And then sometimes, Jay, it's not just the manufacturer. Sometimes it's the lender. Because, you know, Ally does leasing and U.S. Bank does leasing. U.S. Bank is one of your bigger lessees. Yep. They have their requirement that you have to either buy the vehicle, turn it into U.S. Bank, or you can release with a U.S. Bank lease at a dealership that uses U.S. Bank, but you pay a penalty. They mm. basically increase the amount of your payment by what it would cost to register that car you're turning in good point and yeah if you, so. if, you, if you guys that are listening here have any questions and you want to put them in the comments about your lease that you have um we will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible we will return your messages we get a lot of them um, you can go to the autoauthorities.com also and you can leave a message there for us but this is complicated stuff, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens. And now that you know, we we're pretty close to being out of time, but we we really don't have any, hardly any leases going on right now at all because they suck. Now, now uh, right now, you're seeing basically your average lease is going to be equal to a 72 month payment. So the advantage of leasing right now is your shortening your window so if you're going to bet that the market's going to loosen up dramatically and that aprs are going to come down they did go ahead and pause increasing the interest rates at the federal reserve this month so if you're going to bet hey i think interest rates are going to come down i want to be in a position to be more flexible and get out of this expensive car and get into a lower price car in a couple of years a lease is a good gamble. Mm -hmm. You're not going to save a ton of money. It's not like at times when all the leases were subvented. Right. But generally speaking, if you want to make sure you're getting an okay deal on a lease, 
asked to see a lease payment and to see a 72-month finance term. The lease payment and the 72-month finance term should be virtually identical. If the lease payment is way more than the 72-month option, don't lease the vehicle. If it's the same or a little bit less, it's fine, go ahead. And that way you create your out from the vehicle instead of a 72-month lease, you usually have to go about, 72-month loan, sorry, you have to go about 48 months to be in a good position to trade out of it. On a 36-month lease, usually at about 24, 27 months, you can break out of it and trade it into something. So that's the advantage of leasing right now is just creating flexibility. Whole key, make sure that lease payment is the same or slightly lower than 72-month finance payment. If it's more, don't do it. Great, great advice. And for those of you listening, uh, leave your comments below. Go to the Auto Authorities on YouTube and subscribe to our uh, YouTube page. Yeah. And uh, Gerald, do you have anything else that uh, you want to share before we part today? Uh, you know, just if you want to search out Wrestling with Sales on YouTube, you can check out, uh, talked with, it's still up there with Ray Shevska from Car Edge. They, they talk about a lot of the same things. You can check out that episode talking with him. We kind of got into the weeds a little bit about buying a car and selling a car. So pretty interesting, really on about the same topic. All right. Cool. Well, thanks everybody.